Hey everyone, Matt from Workshop Tinker is here. Today we're going to take a look at some basic hot end troubleshooting. I pulled mine out so I can handle it a bit better. I'm going to take it apart later on just because I'm curious and I'm sure everyone else is to a point as well. Uh, let's see, let's start with the basics. Um, when you first plug in your I don't want a hero. So the things that you need to check for wiring is your fan, which is the red and green labeled F. If you unplug it, it's going to stop there. So there are four wires. Let's start with that. Four wires, two of which are easily identifiable. The other two we can have a decent guess at. You have your stepper, the four wire here, labeled D for delta, or sorry, five wire. I keep forgetting these are five wire unipolar Stepper motors um, makes it a little bit more difficult. Sorry, 164 stepping, or yeah, a little bit lower. But anyways, the red and green F is the fan. The five wire is the stepper, which actually extrudes and retracts the filament to make it come out the hot end. This is the hot end itself. Well, part of the hot end. I see part of it in there. I know it's not a full metal. Something with uh, um, tape on it. Cap, Tom, Cap, Com, Cap, Captain, whatever, high heat resistant tape. I'll take it apart in a bit to look for it. The other two wires, one is going to be the hot end itself, so the, the thermal uh, part makes it hot. I'm going to guess it's E because it's the thicker of the two, and then G is probably the thermistor. The thermistor is what senses the temperature. Now, Marlin has a couple of built-in safety features. One, it won't allow the extruder motor to turn until the hot end is sensed at above around 140, 150 degrees Celsius. This is so that you don't break the motor or strip out the filament by making it turn when it's not hot enough to actually do anything. So that's a safety feature. The other safety feature is if it doesn't sense the thermistor, it's going to shut off. Uh, so if you're having hot end extruder problems, it could be either of those safety features as well as just basic wiring. Um, also, I will say the motor driver, the motor test file that you can get from 101hero.com, according to the creator's notes, so the make, original makers, according to the website, it doesn't test the extruder. Plain and simple, does not test it, which is fine. There's other ways of testing it, especially if you have the uh, uh, developer version with the USB. I'm pretty. I'm going to bet, even if you have the consumer, if you are willing to take a soldering iron to it, I'm betting there's a USB header on there. It's just not accessible or but someone with a spare cable could probably put one on there. Just a guess. I don't know for sure. But either way, some things that you can do. Um, so, you have the extruder out. And if you're thinking the stepper motor's bad itself, one way to test it is swap it with one of the other motors and run the motor test. If it moves at all, it's good. It should move. I don't know which direction it moves. I haven't actually checked. Uh, the other things to test is make sure, one of the easiest things to test is make sure the thermistor isn't broken. Uh, give me a minute and I'll set up to show you how to do that. Okay, I'm rather glad I did that off camera. One, I had to find my uh, multimeter. I knew where this one was, not this one. Anyways, so for testing this, um, for testing specifically your thermistor, you need a multimeter of some sort. This is a cheapo one I got at Harbor Freight for free with coupon. So it cost me a buck to get some gloves, I think. I don't know. I, I get my razor blades from there as well because they're 60 cents and you get a free whatever you have the coupon for for the day. But I'm going to use my nice auto ranging one. Uh, try to see so you can see it. So uh, I also took apart my hot end, which 
This surprised me. I had a lot of issues because, yeah, one of the screws, the head was broken in half. Actually, I'm going to have to see if I have a substitute of some sort because it's a little bit important. But that one cannot go back. I, I barely got it out of there. Anyways, um, so I was assuming that the thicker wires, the black and the red, were the hot end and the thinner wires, at least by my finger feel, was the thermistor. I have that backwards. The black and red is the thermistor, the reds are the hot end. As you can kind of see here, the red ones actually have the thermal protection, whatever little bit of stuff and the other part doesn't and that is actually makes a lot more sense so what you have in here let's see if I can pull it the whole way out it's a very 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 basic hot end it's got a PTFE tubing probably goes down to here I'm not gonna pull this tape off because I don't have any go back on it's actually a little dirty it's just and it's literally just dirt suit soot I have a feeling uh, but yeah, there's your hot end. I'm going to stop messing with it before I break it anymore. If I can get it back to where it's supposed to go. Right, like... Uh-oh. I don't remember if it was outside or inside. That's going to be a problem. Uh, no, it was definitely like that because the PTFE was right below the extruder. And that's the hob. It's just a, a knurled... It looks like it's a press-on, because I'm not seeing anything to hold it on screw-wise. I'm trying to see it through the camera, but I can't. Actually, hold on, let me get my face in there. I see a hole. Yeah, I think it's just a press-on fitting. Alrighty, fun stuff there. <laughs> Uh, the wires are pretty close, but that's far enough. There's no way that this is going to move. It's actually bolted, well, screwed, whatever. There's actual, that's the only metal screw insert in the whole thing that I've found so far. And I think I've taken apart every screw so far. <laughs> so these are the only ones with the insert. It's probably because it was torquing itself out. Anyways. On to the testing. Multimeter. Ohms. Resistance. That's how you test. So the, the thermistors that are used in 3D printing, high, the higher the resistance, the colder it is. So uh, if I grab the black and red wire here that has gotten tangled, and there's two little metal pads. If I put one probe per pad, if I can hold it, this is sometimes tricky for me because I'm not that dexterous, it would appear. One and one. Uh, no. Uh, of course, I'm using my bum pinky. Okay, so 102,000 ohms. And according to the sheet, here I'll show you what I'm talking about. And uh, zoom, zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. There we go. Turn this sheet, 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be hitting 10,000 ohms. And it is uh, not logarithmic, what am I thinking of? Exponential. I think that's exponential. Or something, it's not linear. It might be even worse. Anyways, uh, so it's hitting 10,000 out of 100. 100,000, yeah. It's 18 degrees Celsius roughly in here to give you an idea. So, and it's actually pretty accurate. I've, uh, according to the readout through the software. So that's one way to tell if this is, if you're getting nothing when you touch, for sure touching both, your, therm, your thermistor's broken. Because you should be getting a pretty high resistance when it's at room temperature. And the hot end, just out of curiosity, but uh, it should get really low if I remember right. Because it is a, it's the same type of heater that's in your toaster. It, you put current through it, it gets hot through resistance. 
but it isn't that high. Yeah, it's actually going up 17, 0.5, 0 0.6, 5. It'd be funny if that's getting it warm, but this is such low current, it shouldn't touch it. Uh, so that's thermistor basic, or hot end basics. Um, something I did while taking this part find out that I rather like. Yes, you can replace the hot end if you can find anything small enough. You gotta remember the motors in the uprights have to be able to move it without her jerking around and yeah you have to keep stuff light so maybe oh sorry this thing beeping at me doesn't like staying on uh... <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought oh right maybe if you want to print out a proper hot end and do a Bowden extrusion make this a little less have issues you might be able to actually add a fan because you take away the weight of the motor, have just a hot end of some sort. I'm not 100% sure. I mean, you have to have something really light, and this whole thing weighs a bit more than a E3D, but not by much. So you still need the plastic and the fan, and yeah, I'm derailing myself. Sorry about that. Anyways, uh basics uh, I wanted to show you how my tubing which you can't see cuz there my long tubing let's reposition the camera long tubing uh, I didn't take it apart I just release re loosened the two screws if you if I show you the actual screws these two screws which take a very small screwdriver to get in there they're kind of deep yeah, uh, get in there, loosen them. You can pull out the old one, and this one just slips down this thing here. And I stopped it right there because that's where there's a groove. No, I kind of there's the groove just above your drive knob because it is really needing the guidance. There's nothing to guide. Um, now, fortunately, this is so... I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not doing major upgrades to this machine. I'd rather get a new printer because I'll spend more on upgrades and still have a subpar device. Anyways, that's your hot end. That's how I upgraded it, and that's how you can check the thermistor. Uh, the other thing to do I was going to mention, swap this cable with one of the other cables, and with the front door open so you can see the knurl like that, I'm not putting it together because I'll lose screws. I gotta wait till I'm off camera for that so I don't break anything. Uh, anyways, release the and just swap it out and put it in the home, and this should move. If it moves, you're good. If this doesn't get hot, you have other issues. Anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.